Yeah, yeah maybe that's what it was. It was like an adventure challenge experience, yeah. I think is what it meant. But it was, yeah. it was, it's different, but it was almost like a precursor. Mm -hmm. It's like not a playground. They called an ACE yeah, course more than summer camp. But it was you know, one of those things where, it's and, beautiful. you know, when we were growing up, we had a whistle. A special whistle to get us home because we were My always mom out. Had a cowbell and a cowbell, <laughs> like yeah. Cliff's cowbell that he was ringing yeah. today. I was like, that's what brought us. We'd home. hear that special whistle and go, oh, gotta go home. You know, <laughs> they never knew where we were. No. We're in, 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 mm. at least in the United States today. Mm. Many times, everything is scheduled yeah. because people mm. are that afraid. Is, there is so much is loss safety. now. Just mm. that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. And not a ropes course either. Yeah. So, so what got you to experience life? Mm -hmm. Me. Well, let's see. I started teaching in 1980 in, uh, this is Wisconsin, <laughs> um, right here in Washburn, this is Lake Superior, mm -hmm. okay, so right here, and I could see the lake from my classroom, so that was a wonderful thing. But I taught special education, and uh, I had students from three counties, four years old to about 20, 21, and I was... Uh, it, my first year teaching, I always like to say that if I was offered that job today, I would run as fast and as far away as possible. <laughs> but I would never trade the experience. So I did everything that I was taught in college to do. And every night, I would go home with a headache. And I was having a headache. Yeah. And I was having no fun. The students were having no fun. They weren't learning anything. And the second year, I decided it had to be different. So I, I went back on my, um, my experience as a camp counselor for seven years. And we played, and we did picnics, and we taught each other, and we became a family. And I realized there's something here. There's something to this. Hello? Oh, excuse us. So there's something to this. And um, then I moved to Madison, Wisconsin, and met Bert. And uh, we started. <coughs> Let's see, I was, it would, would have been 1984. It was when you went off to that first conference, yeah. June of 84. June of 84. I had an opportunity, so I was walking around somewhere in some school in Madison, and this woman, Sandy Gunderson, comes up and says, Hey, Lori, you'd really like this. We have money to go to this workshop. It's called Project Adventure. And uh, the people who got the, the grant can't go, so why don't you go? So I said, Oh, sure. Were, yeah, they were like, it was a last minute thing. Last minute, jumped on a plane, went out to Project Adventure. My first workshop, it was an adventure in the classroom. Dick Prouty taught it, and he's now the CEO of the company. And um, it, I was kind of blown away. Wait, wait, these, this, they're putting language on what I think I was doing with these mm -hmm. students. And then um, I started connecting with AEE and found it. I ended up going to a conference. It would have been a Heartland, I think, regional conference. I can't remember what year. And I came back saying, I'm home. This is it. You went to Austin, too. And I went to Austin, but it, this was before Austin. Yeah. I said, I'm home. I found my people. Yeah. And uh, I found a professional home. So it, it was, you know, it, just the idea of trying to do everything that I thought I was supposed to do and then just doing what I felt was right, you know, two different things. The, so, you helped me articulate this. Um, I think it, this experiential education in the K-12 schools in the United States is still seen as other, mm -hmm. alternative, oh, yeah. different. Um, and to be really aware of that, that some days may feel really lonely and that there are other people wherever you are that are your allies. They're there. But most likely they've shut their doors because they're feeling lonely and other and different. So it's important to seek out your allies. Find them. They're there. Uh, whether they're in the same school or the same district or it's an administrator or a parent uh, or, or the, your students, whoever they are, find, find them because they're there. It's been my experience that they're always the best teachers in your area too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amazingly. Yeah. So. Or not amazingly, because what, I think what we're talking about is really good teaching anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and someday we will not be the other. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're we're moving in that direction. Uh -huh. Until then, we need to be very intentional about finding our finding those who are uh, part of the family. Mm. Yep. Mm -hmm. The most challenging 
Part of what I do has been the skepticism of the system, systems, mm -hmm. educational systems, and the skepticism of the people within those systems. The most satisfying part of what I do has been the skepticism of the systems <laughs> and the skepticism of the people within those systems. Because um, at first it was incredibly frustrating and challenging. And over time, because it's been, what, 25, 30 years in there somewhere, uh, I can see that the efforts that we make collectively as experiential educators, whatever methodologies we use, is making a difference. Mm -hmm. Some of the biggest skeptics that I've dealt with are now some of our biggest supporters. And so mm -hmm. I've come to um, appreciate skepticism. I don't think it's a barrier. I think it's a... Um, it's a challenge that once you can meet that challenge or address it or include people who are skeptical, then that's when I mean, there, there are people who are, are willing to really embrace what it is that we do. And so, I mean, I'm just looking at the Madison schools and what's happened there and how over 25, 30 years, the, the programs that we started way back when, how they're just flourishing and people you would never ever expect to be interested in anything around experiential or adventure or outdoors or anything are now the ones going I, I can do this it's a good thing mm -hmm. so to me it's a blessing and a curse you know, all that skepticism but I think it keeps us sharp as well it's not just because so many times we'll say oh you know this is this is great stuff and someone goes how is it great <laughs> explain that causes us to have to dig deep and I mm -hmm. think it's been a it's been a wonderful journey and I'm glad that I'm still on it yeah mm -hmm. yep. and I would second that as well it is it is a family reunion it's home it's our people um, the other thing for me is the I, I think about where I was 20 years ago with this what my thinking my practice at the time and now I see young people at that same age, and they're light years ahead of where I was. And I'm trying to imagine where we'll be 20 years from now, and I'm, a, I'm an OFA, and, uh, and, and really benefiting from their teaching. Uh, and having that, I, I'm just, I'm very excited about that. I think we're not stagnant. Uh, I don't think we've been stagnant ever, and I'm, my guess is we'll never be because of who we are. Uh, but the, the growth is very exciting. Yeah.